I have a great day planned for us. Hello family. Welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. I am Vicki and you're with Grammy in the Kitchen. Today we're going to make fish and chips and we're also going to make a delicious applesauce cake. Why applesauce cake? Because I have applesauce in my pantry that needs to be used and I want something sweet. But first, we're gonna go ahead and get started on that applesauce cake because it has to cool before we can put our delicious homemade frosting on top. Went into the pantry, did some shopping. Let me show you what we have here. Went ahead and got the cheese grater out of the pantry because we need to grate some Parmesan cheese because I like putting Parmesan cheese on my fish. Plus, we don't have any more grated Parmesan cheese in the freezer. So I went ahead and took out five or six wedges of Parmesan cheese, and we're going to grate that. I have a few potatoes, and then I picked up another five pounds. Not sure how many of these I'm going to need today. Picked up some almond meal. Looks like I'm going to need to get some more of this soon. I like to mix almond meal or almond flour, whatever you want to call it, Parmesan cheese, the crust, our flounder, it is so good. Powder sugar for the cake. Polenta or cornmeal, because we're going to make some homemade hush puppies. Applesauce, this is a cinnamon applesauce. Even though the cake calls were cinnamon, we're using cinnamon applesauce because that's what I have. Nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon, an onion, I took some flounder out of the freezer. I have that in the refrigerator to thaw. Might open up a can of green beans, but that's what we're going to have for dinner tonight. But first, I want to go ahead and get started on this cake. So we'll need a 9 by 9 casserole dish or cake pan. I'm just using a casserole dish. Oven is preheating to 350 degrees. I'm put some coconut oil in here. Just a nice liberal amount of coconut oil. flour okay our pan is ready so we need a half a cup of butter this is room temperature I took it out last night left it on the counter that way it's room temperature need a cup of sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. We're going to cream this till it's light and fluffy. Then we're going to add two eggs, one at a time. We're going to make sure the eggs the sugar and the butter are well incorporated. Then we're going to add in one and a half cups of applesauce. Now the recipe said it's going to look curdled, but that is normal. I don't know if you can see it. But it does look a little curdled, but they say that is normal. It will come together anyway. Two cups of flour, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, one and a half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now 
So we mix it for two minutes and now we have to do the rest by hand. Now we need to mix it by hand to make sure we get all the flour that likes to hide in the bottom of our bowl mixed in. Make sure it's well incorporated. This smells so good, family. Just go ahead and pour it into our prepared casserole dish. Now this is going to go into a preheated 350 degree oven between 35 and 40 minutes until you put a toothpick in and it comes out clean. Timer is set. Let me go ahead and remove all the things we don't need for our dinner and go ahead and get those dishes washed and get that out of the way. We're going to go ahead and get our potatoes prepared. This is what I had left over in the pantry. So I'm making sure I'm using the older ones first. I'm adding a few new ones and I'll put this back in the pantry. So I'm going to go ahead and get them all peeled and then we're going to cut these into french fries. These are yellow Yukon potatoes. You can leave the skin on and just cut them into like potato wedges if you like. My husband and I prefer to have them peeled when we make french fries. So that's what we're going to do. So they're about a half an inch by half inch french fries. Once I get them all peeled and cut into french fries, I'll cover with water and set this aside until we're ready. Applesauce cake is done. It took a lot longer than that 35 minutes. I had it in there for 35 minutes. When the timer went off, I checked it and it was still nowhere near done. And I had left it in there for an additional 18 minutes. That was a total of 53 minutes, but that's okay. So it's completely done. Put a toothpick in, comes out clean, perfect. Now we need to let this cool completely before we put our frosting on there. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna go ahead and get started on dinner. And we're gonna have fish and chips. Potatoes were peeled and cut into french fries. I got them in that bowl right there, soaking in some water. That's gonna take longer to cook than the fish. Before we get started on anything else, we need to go ahead and grate our Parmesan cheese. I went ahead and took Six wedges out of the freezer last night, stuck it in the refrigerator. And today what I did was I took one wedge and then cut it in half. So I have 12 pieces here. I like having grated Parmesan cheese in the freezer, ready to go when we need it. But I don't prefer to buy it already grated. I'd rather grate it myself. They put an additive and grated Parmesan cheese that keeps it from clumping. 
If you look at the ingredients, you know, say whatever the name of it is, anti-caking. I don't want that in my cheese. That prohibits it from melting on whatever you're cooking. So I'd rather grate it myself. I have the cheese grater attachment to the KitchenAid. I have a bowl underneath to collect it. And I can find that when I cut it in half, if I turn one this away, kind of make a rectangle, it fits in there better. So we have it all grated up and we're going to go ahead and bag this and put it in the freezer. I have a little piece that did not grate, but that's okay. We'll just tear it apart with our fingers. Now the last time we did this together, we didn't weigh or measure our Portions. This time I'm going to put one cup measure in each one of these sandwich Ziploc bags. And then I'll put this in a gallon size freezer bag. Using the measuring cup just for stability. How many one cup measures do you think we can get from here? Pause it right now. Write in your answer. I'm not going to guess. Last chance to write your answer down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13. 12's going in the freezer and one is going to be for dinner. So they were six wedges of Parmesan cheese that we get from Azure Standard. Had them in the freezer. I took six out of the freezer, stuck it in the refrigerator last night. This morning, I cut them in half lengthwise, grated them, and now I have 12 going into the freezer, and I have one for the fish for dinner. I like having grated Parmesan. The oven is preheating 350 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and prepare the french fries. I drained the water out, but I do want to dry them as much as possible. So I have a paper towel.
We're drying the potatoes because we don't want to steam them. We actually want to bake them. I'm going to add avocado oil. You can use olive oil if you like or whatever the oil of your choice. Maybe a tablespoon. Sounds about right. We're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. About a quarter teaspoon of pepper. One teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm going to give this a toss. I have a parchment paper line baking sheet. This is the big one. out into a single layer. This is going to take about an hour because they are raw and I want them to be nice and crispy on the outside and tender and soft on the inside. Every 15-20 minutes we're going to take them out, give them a good toss, put them right back in the oven. The flounder we are using is the individually packaged frozen grocery store flounder. This one has two pieces in it. This one has one. This one has two. So it looked like we're doing about five pieces. It was a two pound bag we got from Walmart. So this is about half of that sewish. And we're just gonna be doing this. I need to get these open. Then I'll show you my breading. So I have the flounder with paper towels just trying to dry it off really, really well. So we have two eggs. I'll put just a maybe an eighth of a cup or two tablespoons of milk. And if we need to add more eggs to it, that's not a problem. We could do that. And in this bowl, I'm going to add about two cups of almond flour. Salt. Pepper. A teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. A teaspoon of onion powder. A teaspoon of garlic powder. You know, I'm going to need a bigger bowl. We're going to use a cake pan instead. And we're going to add about half of this package of grated Parmesan cheese. So about a half a cup. Make sure we get the spices, the cheese, salt and pepper. All mixed in here really well. So I have this small baking sheet lined with parchment paper. So we're going to take a flounder, put it in the egg mixture, and into the almond flour mixture. Pat it on there really, really tight so it puts a nice crust on it. And that Parmesan cheese will stick to it. All those herbs and spices. And onto the bacon sheet. I'm 
This recipe came about because the husband and I had a vacation that was planned for 2020. And we both wanted to lose weight. And we did. So I'm using almond flour because it's keto friendly. At the time we were doing keto, we lost the weight. Our health wasn't doing so great. People who could be on keto and have no health issues, more power to them. It did not work for us health-wise. Weight-wise, it works great. Health-wise, not so much. So this recipe came about because we both like flounder and we love breaded flounder. And I messed around in the kitchen and figured I'd give this a try. And it's our favorite way to eat flounder, breaded baked flounder. So we just, even though we're not doing keto, we kept this recipe. You can do this ahead of time. Put it in the freezer and then once it's all frozen, then you can put it in Ziploc bags and that way you don't have to go through this each and every time you want to have flounder. And all you have to do is take it from the freezer, put it in a pan, on a pan with some parchment paper, and then bake it. It will take a little bit longer to bake it from a frozen state, but at least it'll be prepared for you. And this is how we enjoy our flounder. All right, so it's on here. Let me clean up, and I'm going to put this in the refrigerator until we're ready to bake this. Let me go ahead and get this whole kitchen reset. French fries are in the oven. Fish is in the refrigerator. Our applesauce cake is right there. Mm. Only thing left to do is to make the hush puppies and cook some green beans. It's a good day. We need to give our fries a good toss. And back in the oven. Now we're going to go ahead and get started on the hush puppies. This is more onion than I need. So we're just going to chop the whole thing up, use what we need, and then put the rest in the freezer. It says about a half of a small onion. So we're probably going to do a quarter of this onion. Right, we're going to save that for the hush puppies. This is the onions for the hush puppies. This is the onions we're going to put in the freezer for future use. And I've told y'all before, the husband does not mind the flavor of onions, celery, carrots, pretty much all vegetables. He just does not want to bite into them. So I'm just going to go through and cut them as small as I possibly can.
Breeze and Polenta. You can use cornmeal if you like. You need one and a half cups. This is a half cup measure. We need a half cup of all purpose flour. We need one and a half teaspoons of salt. One and a half teaspoons of bacon powder. A half teaspoon of bacon soda. Half teaspoon of sugar. One egg. A cup of milk. This is a half cup measure. Whisk that all together. And it says half of a small onion. I did a quarter of a big onion, but I think I'm only going to add about half of this. The rest of it will just stick in the freezer. And because I'm using a polenta and not regular cornmeal, I'm going to let this sit to make sure the polenta, the corn, can absorb some of that moisture. So I'm just going to set this aside until we're ready. The french fries are still in the oven. The hush puppies are in that bowl waiting for us. The flounder is still in the refrigerator. We have not put that in the oven yet, but we're going to go ahead and get started on the frosting for that applesauce cake. So we need a half a stick of butter or a quarter of a cup, a half a cup of brown sugar. This is a quarter measure. We need two tablespoons or one eighth of a cup of milk. We gotta get everything melted. Once it's melted, cook it for two minutes. All right, two minutes is gonna start right now. We're not gonna to touch it. We're just gonna let it cook for two whole minutes. Two minutes is up. We're going to set this aside until it cools off. About 10-15 minutes. In that time, we can go ahead and finish dinner. French fries are starting to get a little crispy on the outside. Beautiful. I'm going to scoot these over to one side of this pan so we can go ahead and get our fish in the oven. We've had this in the refrigerator this whole time. Back in the oven, we're going to cook it for about 20 minutes. We're going to turn the flounder and cook it for an additional 20 minutes. We've got the small saucepan on the stove. I want to go ahead and put some oil in here so we can cook our hush puppies. I am using coconut oil. 
Yes, I do know that coconut oil will transfer flavor. But out of the three oils I use between olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil, coconut oil is the cheapest. You wouldn't want to fry with olive oil anyway. And avocado oil is too expensive. I just went ahead and opened up one of our home canned green beans. Got them in the pan because I'm running out of pots. With a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper. See how well that thickened up by letting it sit for about 30 minutes? Beautiful. So I got a little bit of the cornmeal mixture in the spoon. We're going to drop them in. I'm using a very small pot so I don't have to use a lot of oil. It's going to take me a while to get all these done, but that's okay. All right, we can do four at a time. Just barely touching them to make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. Oh, look at the color lip family. That is beautiful. Look at that. absolutely gorgeous just about three to four minutes on each side I have the bacon sheet with paper towels. I am going to put the hush puppies on here. Let that oil come back up to temperature. We'll cover it with a cloth to make sure they stay nice and warm. Let's check on dinner. French fries looks beautiful. I want them a little bit more crispier. I did turn the oven up to 400 degrees once we put the fish in the oven. They're not quite ready to turn back in the oven. Hush puppies are done. We'll keep a cloth on those just so they'll stay warm without causing condensation. Green beans are done. Now we're ready to go ahead and frost in our cake. So here is our brown sugar, butter, and milk mixture. We need to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And a cup of powdered sugar. Make sure we get that powder sugar mixed in very well with that brown sugar and butter mixture. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the frosting on our applesauce cake. I 
Oh, dessert is done. Hush puppies are done. Green beans are done. French fries almost ready. Waiting on that fish. Family, look at those French fries. They're, they've been in the oven for an hour and a half. They are beautiful. I'm going to turn the flounder. Look at that color. Gorgeous. Oop, I'm losing breading. No, 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 no. Back in the oven for about 20 more minutes. French fries will be beautiful. And the other side of the flounder will get nice and crispy. I took it out of the oven this way. I'm going to do a 180 turn. Put it in this way. That way everything cooks nice and even. Let's taste a hush puppy. Oh, look at that family. There we go. Isn't that gorgeous? I do like to add butter to mine. Especially when they're nice and hot. Yummy. Family. So good. Mmm. Cooked to perfection. We're almost ready for dinner. Just gotta wait on that flounder. I just hope there's hush puppy fluffed. Family, dinner is ready. Let's have a piece of fish. Some french fries, a couple hush puppies, some green beans. That's a perfect dinner. Let's try some fish. Mmm. Perfectly seasoned. Our french fries. Yep, that's good. Some green beans. We already tried the hush puppies. We know these are good. We're going to go ahead and cut our applesauce cake. You see that? So gorgeous. Now we're going to go ahead and taste this applesauce cake. You can see all the spices. With that caramel, buttercream sauce, as the frosting, cloves, and the nutmeg, and the cinnamon with that applesauce, it is fall. It, if you were to describe fall, the season fall to me, this would be it. This is autumn on a fork. So I just want to say thank you very much for hanging out with me in the kitchen today while we made a delicious, healthy, nutrient-dense meal. Things we had in our pantry, things we had in our freezer, all homemade, all from scratch. Even a dessert. It cannot get any better than this. If you don't mind, give this video a thumbs up and while you're at it, please subscribe. 
Please share this video on all your social medias. Tag somebody that you know that can benefit of having a, a pantry, of having a freezer full of food, and be able to cook delicious, healthy, nutrient meals from their pantry, from their freezer, without having to go to the store and pay full price for anything. You want to learn a bit more about Azure Standard, please stick around. Next vid video is going to be about Azure Standard and our grocery haul. Right over here, you're going to see two videos. Please go check those out while we're waiting on the next upload. They're either going to inspire you or give you a chuckle. It's okay. It's fine with me. So until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Bye, family. Autumn on a fork.